Before the movie starts, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be kept informed of all new content. Now, enjoy! Soldiers, as they've been newspaper men, you ought to win this war in a whistle. Mr. Leonard. Just a minute, Hank. I'm saying goodbye to the boys. And, Doc, if you're as good an officer as you've been a doctor... Uh, Mr. Leonard, I, I've got to talk to you. It's very important. Oh, just a minute, Hank. These men are going to war tonight to fight for their country, for us. Do you know of anything more important than that? Yes, sir. And, Doc? No. Yes, sir. Doc, it's Cynthia. She's ready. We've got to go. You know I can't go, Charlie. They'll be sounding assembly any minute now. Call Dr. Bradley. Oh, Doc, you brought all our other children into the world. And to Cynthia, there's no other doctor in all Iowa. All right, men, fall in. Goodbye, Charlie. I'm sorry. All right. Forward, march. Gosh, I don't see why Doc Robbins had to go and be a major. Shall I go after Doc Bradley now? No, I don't figure you'll have to, Hank. Somehow or other, I don't think the major will ever leave town without taking care of Cynthia first, even if he has to court-martial himself afterwards. There goes the last of the infantry. And there's that riverboat warning us again. And if we ain't aboard when she sets out, we're deserters. Jim? You better go get the Major. Well, what's the use? We sent Frank and Owen in a half an hour ago, didn't we? That's right. Yeah, and they ain't even come out to tell us what's happening. We know what's happening, all right. But we just ain't got time to wait till it happens. I love babies. But I ain't aiming to face no firing squad in a counter one. Well, all right, I'll go in. It's the Majors. Hey, fella. 
Alex, what's the idea? Has it come yet? No. What's the delay? Charlie. After all, there's nothing original about this affair. It's been going on for some time. But there's always danger. Of course there is. But judging from all the people in the world, it's been a pretty successful enterprise. Besides, this is your fifth child. I know. But I'll never go through it again, Grandma. Never. It's a pity the way you poor men suffer. You just pray this one's a boy. That's all you've got to do. Because if Cynthia has her way, you're going to have a house full of suffragettes someday. Equal rights for women. That's Cynthia's slogan. And when you figure all she's gone through bringing girls into the world, you can't blame her for wanting everything she can get for them. It's got to be a boy. This one's got to be a boy. It's got to be a boy. Here's to my son. Everything's all right, Charlie. It's the girls. Are you sure, Doc? Hmm? I mean, would you mind looking again? Charlie! Come on, you men. Have you forgotten we're going to war? Say one thing for you. You got a good voice. If a body meet a body coming through the rye, if a body kiss a body, need a body cry. Every lassie has her laddie, name they say have I. Yet all the lads, they smile on me. When coming through the ride. Well, young lady, you got a very, very good voice. But <laughs> not, for, not for Grand Opera. Oh, Grandma. Ah, Hans, that's very nice, but <laughs> you, you can't sing Grand Opera neither. <laughs> You know, if he... <laughs> now, stop that. Stop that right away. What? What is it? What's wrong? Grand Opera was our ambition, Mr. Damrosch. We came all the way from Clinton, Iowa to New York, just so we... We? we? What do you mean, we? You, uh, are you also a singer? I can remember having a rather nice voice when I was young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nearly everybody can remember having a nice voice when I was young. <laughs> I just told Hans he couldn't sing Grand Opera, and he didn't, he didn't start to cry like you do. He just keeps on singing. And you're off the key right now. You're flat, you dumb cop. <laughs> say, what's the matter with you? Do, you? do you like to cry? <laughs> Sit down, please. Mr. Danrush, Grandma's a little excited. Yeah, I know. Why don't you sit down when I say so? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There, now, that's better. Now, you, uh, you are the grandma, uh, the, uh, the grandmama, yeah? Yeah, I mean, yes, Mr. Damrosch. And, uh, your mama, she's dead? Oh, no, no, Mr. Damrosch. Well, then, why ain't she not here with you? Well, you see, she happens to be very busy. My mother is in politics. I suppose you taught her such nonsense. No, I believe woman's place is in the home. Right. Right, now that's for once you're right. Woman's place is in the home. <laughs> uh, now, uh, where do you live? Ninth Street. And your father? Is he living? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Well, the poor man has five daughters and a suffragette wife, so I don't know whether you could really call him alive or not. <laughs> One of the girls got married in Chicago, but the others are here. Helen is my pet, of course, yeah. and I'm sure she has great talent. Perhaps yeah. not for grand opera, as you say, but then you could be wrong about that, just as you were wrong about your canary bird. I mean, when you said the little fellow was off key, because he wasn't, Mr. Damrosch. I have a perfect ear for music, and he wasn't flat. <coughs> I'm 
snuff. <clears throat> this interview is at an end, ladies. Good afternoon. Very well. Come, Helen. There are many other teachers in the world. Yeah, too many grandmothers. Look, you, you come back here tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. Do you mean you're really going to teach me? Surely. Well, I'm, I'm going to try. You know, I, I, I like you very much. And I... <laughs> but I'm, I'm sorry for you. Why, Mr. Demos? Because you're, you're beautiful. But if that were true, why should it make you feel sorry for me? Ah, listen. Even if you have great success, you most likely will be very, very unhappy. Beautiful women generally are. Why? Well, so many men will fall in love with your beauty. And you may never know which one really loves you for yourself. I'll... tomorrow at three. I'll be here, Mr. Damrosch. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Look, without Grandma. Yeah. I'm glad you're not hurt. Hurt? Young man, if it weren't for you, we would have been killed. I just happened to be in the way, that's all. You were very brave. All right, ladies, you can get back in the carriage now. With those horses? Do you think I'm a dunce? Don't worry, lady. After that exercise, they won't run again for years. Nevertheless, we're walking, thank you. Grandma, what? Where's your nerve? You mean you really want to get back into that carriage? Very well, you've many more years to worry about than I have. And thank you again, young man. Oh. Bye. And thanks again. Bye. Yeah. Hi, Jim and Eddie. You are a very brave young man. I saw you from the window of my office. You are a very brave fellow. And the lady, she was very beautiful. What's her name? I don't know. Well, you saved her life? Don't know her name? <laughs> you are also a very stupid young man. Hey, what is your name? Moore, Alexander Moore. I should hate to say such a beautiful creature and never know who she was. I'll find out someday. Perhaps. Bravo. And when you do, you will tell me, eh? I mean, just so I can invite you both down to my theater. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Sarge Town, Redfoot. Sarge Town, Redfoot. Hello, Gus. How's the business? Fine. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much, Mr. Pastor. Don't mention. Uh, Sarge Town, Redfoot. Sarge Town, Redfoot. Sarge Town. If your mother don't stop having these maintenance, I'll have to call for reinforcements to handle the traffic. Then you'd better send for your reinforcements, because I'm sure my mother will never be satisfied until all the women in New York are here. Bicycles! Banners! Boots for women! Suffrage is disgraceful! Disgusting! I tell you, I'm not going to stand for it. Meetings, meetings, meetings. Bicycles cluttering up the front of the house. 
Why don't those women go home and wash up their dishes? Oh, Grandma, shh. Let's listen. I'm not interested. Oh, she looks so wonderful and important. Who? Mother. Oh, she's going to speak. Yes. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. As the mother of five girls, I am naturally interested in seeing women take their proper place in world events. We bear the first burden of humanity. We suffer to produce life. Therefore, we should have a voice in the conduct of it. <laughs> and, and when women vote, there will be no more dishonesty in politics. No more graft in our civic affairs. And above all else, there will be no more wars in the world because women will never endorse murder of any description. <laughs> and so, with all due humility, I accept the invitation of our party to run for mayor of New York, and if elected... <laughs> and if elected, I promise to try to make you proud of your sex. When I have seen the glory of the calling of the Lord, he is stamping out the vintage where the grapes have brought the sword. He has used the faithful lightning of his terrible Mother's just been nominated for the mayor of New York. Really, Helen? Well, if your mother runs New York as well as she's run me, the city is in for it. Oh, Dad, you're terrible. <laughs> You may do, do not wait to shed your light afar To the many duties ever near you now be true Brighton the corner where you are Brighton the corner where you are Brighton the corner where you are Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Hello. What's for women? <laughs> Eat right. Oh, Polly. <laughs> Poor mother. Father, why couldn't you say something well, to Well, I tried to, Helen, but I, I just couldn't talk. I guess i sort of gotten out of practice around here. Grandma, I don't see why you didn't say something, though. You never found it difficult to talk before. I'm sure Mother knows how we all feel. And I know how your mother feels. Cynthia Leonard is not the timid type of woman. You know that, Charlie Leonard. You never saw her shed a tear in your life, not even when these children were being born. Why, this defeat today means nothing to her. Nothing. Humiliated a little. But you've been crying, Mother. I've often cried, but this is the first time I've ever been caught at it. And I don't want you to tattle either. I won't. I won't if you promise me you won't cry anymore. I won't, dear. And I want you to promise me that... that you'll give up all this talk about the theater I've been hearing lately. Oh, but, Mother, that isn't fair. You wanted me to study music, didn't you? Yes, dear, but... but only if you could reach the top. Grand opera, I mean. I talked to Leopold Damrosch yesterday about you. Yes? What did he say? He said that he thought that you would have a career of a kind. Of course, he said you were very beautiful. Yes. 
Yes, I know. He told me that, too. Did he also tell you to be afraid? Yes. But I'm not, Mother, because I don't think I'm beautiful. You are going to be very attractive to men, Helen. I don't mind that, Mother. I don't dislike men. <laughs> Neither do I, if it's the right one. I've never seen anyone I thought I could love. Except... Except whom? Oh, I don't even know his name, Mother. As a matter of fact, I'll probably never see him again. So you see, you don't have to worry about me. Oh, but I do, dear. That's why I want you to forget the stage for a little while. But I can't, Mother. You can't, or... Or won't? Both. Helen, what if I made my request a command? I'm afraid I'd disobey you, Mother. I'll go down and speak to them. Oh, I wouldn't if I were you, Mother. Mother! 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 I'll stop those hoodlums. Mother! Cynthia! Cynthia, Cynthia don't! Cynthia, you Cynthia. mustn't. You mustn't. Helen! Helen! Helen. Won't you please leave? My mother's so very tired. Why don't you run for something, lady? I'd vote ten times for you. <laughs> please. 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 Won't, won't you please leave? Please. Remember me? I should, don't you think? Won't you come up and sit down with me? Yes, I'd like to, if you don't mind. What were you doing around here? Oh, I just happened along with the crowd, I guess. This is the second time you happened along when I was in trouble. What's your name? Alexander Moore. Glad to know you, Mr. Moore. And so glad to see you again. You were very brave facing that mob alone. Oh, I knew they were just celebrating. Besides, it won't do them any good, because the women will win someday. Mr. Moore, do you believe in equal rights for women? Well, I guess I do, sort of. Where's that music? Oh, that's from Mrs. Rose's place. She turned her yard into a garden cafe. What do you mean, sort of? About women's rights? Yes. Well, I guess a woman's entitled to everything a man can give her. Don't you think she's entitled to her own success? It depends on what she calls success. What do you call it? Happiness. Oh, well, that's just a state of mind. It isn't always success. What's your ambition? Well, first I want... I want everybody to love me. Yet yeah, I... I want to love someone so madly that... that, that nobody else matters. Well, that's selfishness, isn't it? No, you, you don't understand what I mean. I want everybody to love my work on the stage. Are you an actress? Well, I, I hope to be someday. What's your ambition? A job. What kind? Any job now. I'm trying to get out a New York paper. Maybe Father could help you. He once owned a newspaper in Clinton, Iowa. I'm going to own my own paper someday. Oh, I bet you will, too. Thank you. If I don't, I won't mind, just as long as I don't get hurt too much trying. That's what I'm hoping for you, too. Well, getting very late, and your mother wants you to come in. Yes, Grandma, I'll be right in. Well, Mr. Moore, I, I guess I'll have to say good night. And I hope you get that job. If I do, I'll come and tell you, may I? Let's make a pact. If you get on the newspaper before I get on the stage, you take me out and we'll celebrate. And if you get on the stage before I get on a paper? I'll take you out. That's fair, isn't it? Not exactly. A girl can't just take a fellow out. Why? Well, just... Doesn't sound right somehow. Anyway, it's a deal, and I'll do my best to get a job before you do. All right, and if you don't, I'll... I'll still expect you to remember our pact. Good night, Mr. Moore. Good night, Miss... Gosh, I almost forgot again. What's your name? 
Helen. Helen Leonard. Good night, Miss Leonard. Helen. Good night. Who's that young man, Helen? You know him, Grandma. He's the boy that stopped our horses and saved our lives. Oh. oh. You are right, Rosa. Her voice is as magnificent as your spaghetti. Who is she? Her name is Helen Lerner. Her mother is something, something in politics. But the daughter, she's all right. Believe me, Tony, she's beautiful. Well, if she's half as beautiful as her voice, Rosa. Come on. I'll show it to you. And the band played on. Mm -hmm. Casey would waltz with the strawberry blonde, and the band played on. He'd glide across the floor with the girl he adored, and the band played. But his brain was so loaded, it nearly exploded. The poor girl would shake with alarm. He'd ne'er leave the girl with the strawberry curls. And the band played on. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. You'll pardon the intrusion, please, but I could not resist the sound of your voice or the praise of your neighbor, Mrs. Rose, at whose place I have been dining. I am a Tony Pastor. You're not Tony Pastor's theater. <laughs> no, I am not the theater, but the theater belongs to me. And that's why I'd like to see you tomorrow at noon, if you are interested in going on the stage. Interested? We've been playing theater for years now. And as Helen's one and only audience, I'm in a position to tell you, sir, that this girl is a star. Oh, Father, please. Tomorrow at noon? I'll be there, Mr. Pastor. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Pastor. Good night, Mr. Pastor. Oh, Father, do you really think that was Tony Pastor? Why, of course, child. He's the biggest producer in New York. Nat Goodwin works for him, and May Irwin, and Pete Daly. They tell me that when you're a hit at Tony Pastor's, you're a star from then on. And do you really think I should see him tomorrow? Well, don't you want to be a star? Oh, more than anything else in the world, Father. But... But what? Well, Mother doesn't want me to go on the stage. I know. I guess she's afraid I won't be happy. Perhaps she's afraid I won't be a success. Oh, nonsense. You'll be a success in whatever you do, Helen, because you're all woman, and there's nothing finer than that. You know, that's where your mother's suffragettes are all wrong. They're going to get equal rights, ultimately, and the chance to act like men, maybe, but they're going to lose a lot of femininity. And when they do, something tells me that they're going to lose more power than they'll ever get back by voting. Uh, however, you needn't tell your mother that I said that. What's that they're playing now? My evening star. Sing it. Oh, you, Father. Mr. Pastor may still be there, and I wouldn't want him to think I was showing off. Well, sing it softly, just for me. You know, sweetheart, this may be the last performance of our make-believe theater. My evening star. Bye. 
Come in, Miss Leonard. Sit down. Helen Leonard. I don't like your name, but you open for me a week for Monday, and to begin with, I'm going to pay you $25 a week. All right? Oh, it's more than all right, Mr. Pastor. Yeah, but I don't like your name. I don't like Helen, and I detest Leonard. Now, what is your mother's name? Cynthia. Cynthia. Oh, yes, but we can't use her name, Mr. Pastor, because she doesn't want me to go on the stage. <laughs> Didn't you know you came down here today? No. No, I didn't tell her. But if you change my name, I won't even have to tell her when I open, will I? Not if you don't want to. Now, what are we going to call you? What is your favorite flower? The rose. The rose. No, I don't care for that either. Mose, what is your favorite flower? The lily, sir. Lily, eh? Yeah? Li lily. I rather like that. Lily and what? Lily. I have it. I can see it as plainly as if some mysterious hand were writing it for me. Tony Pastor presents. <laughs> this will completely fool your mother. The great English ballad singer, Lillian Russell. From now on, my dear, that will be your name. And something tells me that will be a very important name. What's the matter? Don't you like Lillian Russell? Oh, yes. Yes, of course I do, Mr. Pastor. But somehow I'm already a little lonesome for Helen Leonard. Young man, you frightened me. I didn't mean to. Well, you did. Besides, why are you still waiting? I've already said there was nothing open. I know, but I have to have a job, Miss Hobbs. What do you expect me to do about it? Ask Mr. Cooper to see me. I know if I could just see him, I could sell him the idea that... Miss Hobbs, Mr. Cooper sent down for the drawings of the Sunday amusement spread. Shall I take them in? No, just place them over there. I'll take care of them. As I was saying, Miss Hobbs, I know if I could just talk to him for five minutes, I, I know I could convince him. I've got ideas, Miss Hobbs, good ideas. I'm going places, really I am, someday. Helen Leonard. Well, this is Helen Leonard. Isn't she beautiful? And I, I've got a date with her. Rosie, you are my posy. A rosy posy, you are my heart bouquet. Rosie, my rosy sweet. Am I your Rosie, your little? Gee, oh gosh, but you're so pretty. You're so smart and you're so witty. Am I your husband? You have simply got me crazy, picking petals off a daisy. Come out here in the moonlight. There are some... Can't you see that I adore you, that my heart is yearning for you? But my little sweet potato, can't you let me see you later? Your honey child is waiting. Your ruby lips to... I discovered just what bliss is from your ever-loving kisses. Don't be so aggravated. My blushing beautiful, 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 beautiful girl. My rosy... Hi-ho, here I go. But I'll be Tony when he takes me down to Coney and we share a little hot dog on a bun. Bun, bun. He can hold my heart for ransom if he'll take me in a hansom down direct and there we'll have a lot of fun. Bun, bun. Gee, how happy I could really be. Here in the evening when he takes a walk with me. There are some pretty places.
places on the Bowery. I want to feel just like a Cinderella. There is nothing could be sweller. Your holy child is waiting. Your ruby lips to breathe. When I find the proper creature, we will hurry to a preacher. Then to bless the joy of marriage, who'll be in the baby carriage. A little rosy, a rosy. Father, would you let me be the father? Rosie, my Rosie, hi-ho, here we go. Rosie, you are my... You are my heart. Come out here in the moonlight. There are some... Your heart... So aggravate my blushing rose. Am I your blushing little rose? seem to recall the name. Alexander Moore. Remember you once called me a very stupid young man? Stupid? No, brave. Well, you're the young hero who saved Lillian Russell's life. <laughs> I'm afraid you're the one that's stupid now, Mr. Pastor. Her real name's Helen Leonard. But she is wonderful, isn't she? The greatest attraction I ever had. Won't you sit on the box and see the rest of the show? Oh, I think not. I'm, I'm leaving now, sir. Good night, Mr. Pastor. Good night, Mr. Moore. Lillian Russell. Lillian Russell. Yes, I know, Miss Russell. You know, she's only been on the stage three weeks and she's already a star, and I've spent 30 years of my life in grease paint with nearly a twinkle. Ah, uh, that sex not at me, boy. You know, if my name had been Maggie instead of Michael, I might not be out here in the alley right now. So what could I do for you, sir? Lillian Russell. Nothing now, thanks. It's Lillian Russell. It's Lillian Russell. <laughs> oh, aren't they wonderful, oh. Grandma? <gasps> Even more than last night. And another basket of roses. Oh, I hope that the card this time, I'd like to know who's been sending them, wouldn't you, Grandma? Well, I don't know about that. I received a very valuable gift once, just after I married your grandfather. And if I'd known whom it was from, out of respect to your grandfather, I would have sent it right back. Didn't you suspect anyone? Yes. But your grandfather didn't, so I kept it. And then years and years later, at our golden wedding, I told him all about it. What did he say? Well, the joke was on me, because he had sent the present. And I've been waiting 50 years for me to thank him for it. <laughs> Look. Diamonds. Diamonds and emeralds. Oh. Oh, it's a beautiful bracelet, Grandma. Oh, I hope you don't find a card with it, because if you do, I'll have to send it back, won't I? Oh, it's wonderful. Well, whoever sent it must be a millionaire. Oh, I wonder who he is. You don't mean a fat old millionaire, do you? Well, that's the sad part of millionaires, dear. They're generally old and fat. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, that's Mr. Pastor. Oh, yes. Come in. Oh, come in, Mr. Pastor. Oh, you are wonderful again tonight, my dear. How do you feel to be a big success, or are you still afraid? Oh, I never was afraid, Mr. Pastor. It's my mother, not I. Well, how do you feel about it now? Well, she doesn't know. Been almost a month. Don't she even suspect? Well, you see, she thinks I'm taking a lesson every night. Oh, but, Mr. Pastor, I just couldn't give it up now. Well, you can't, my dear. 
That is probably why your mother is afraid of it. You can't give it up. Even though you yourself grow tired, you'll still go on. Ooh, your flowers are beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and your bracelet, exquisite. That a gift? Mm -hmm. I got it in my basket of roses tonight. Oh. Whoever sent you that must be very much in love with you. What do you say, Grandma? Well, either that or a very expensive insult. Yes, but men never insult angels, Grandma. Mm -hmm. Well, good night, my dear. Good night, Mr. Pastor, and thanks again for everything. Thank you, Lillian. Uh, may I have one of your roses? Please, may I? There you are. Thank you, Lillian. Oh, do you remember the young man that stopped your horses almost in front of my theater? Remember him? She's been expecting him ever since her first day here. Well, he was here tonight. Did he ask to see me? No, as a matter of fact, he left before the show was over. Oh. Well, good night, Lillian. Good night, Mr. Pastor. Good night, Grandma. Good night, Mr. Pastor. So you see, Grandma, you were wrong. He does know I'm on the stage. He's just forgotten all about our pact. Very well, I'll forget about him. Oh, I'm afraid that's easier said than done. You fell in love with that young man. Oh, Grandma, how can you be so stupid? I scarcely know him. Why should I love him? Just because he stopped our horses? Any gentleman would have done that. And besides, they were about to stop anyway. Well, I do admit I liked him a little. And I thought he liked me. But I guess I can forget about him. As a matter of fact, I've already forgotten him. I was hoping you'd be awake, dear. I wanted to say good night. You were at home when I came in, Mother. No, your father told me you asked for me. Oh, you're tired, aren't you, Mother? A little. Come on, lie down with me. All right. There. Mother, mm -hmm. why don't you give it all up? Your work, I mean. It really doesn't make much difference whether women vote or not, does it? I mean, there must be other ways for a woman to get what she wants out of life, aren't there? Well, that all depends on what she wants. There isn't much to independence if you have to depend on somebody else for it. Did you take your lesson this evening? Yes, I did, Mother. Has um, Mr. Damrosh said anything about your voice lately? Well, he, he thinks I've improved, I think. Has he said so? He often compliments me. Are you satisfied? I think I've improved, and, and Grandma thinks so, too. I mean, are you satisfied with what you're doing? Yes, Mother, I'm thrilled. I mean, I am satisfied, Mother. Helen, let me look at you. Smile. Yes. You do look like Lillian Russell. Mother, have you seen her? <laughs> Nearly every night for the last three weeks. From the same seat in the gallery. And you're wonderful, dear. Just wonderful. Oh, Mother. Oh, and I'm so proud of you. So proud. Helen, where did you get that? I don't know, Mother. I, I got it in a basket of flowers tonight. And you don't know who sent it to you? No. There wasn't a card, a note, or anything. Mother. Mother, I know I'm going to be a success. Yes, dear, I'm... I'm sure you will be. Good night. Mother! 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 Aren't you going to kiss me good night? Yes, dear. Mother. You're not angry with me for going on the stage, are you? No, but... We're going to miss you. I'm not going to leave you, Mother. But you've already left yourself. You're Lillian Russell now, and 
And pretty soon you'll forget you even knew Helen Leonard. Millions of new faces will take the place of the few old ones left behind. Men will... Men will offer fortunes just to stand in the shadow of her glamorous career. And women will envy, but copy her. And perhaps... Yes, even kings may applaud her. Oh, Mother. Do you really think I'll be that successful? I'm afraid you will be, dear. Good night, my darling. Good night, Mother. Sleep tight. Good night. Faces. Men will follow her. Women will copy her. Oh, I hope I like you, Lillian Russell. My evening star is shining down from where. Centerstone Jim is 12 carats. It was part of the Chadwick collection and was originally set in the crown of Louis XVI of France. <laughs> I suppose he lost it when he lost his head. Huh? <laughs> How much? And don't forget, my name is Brady, not Louis XVI. You've lost your head too, haven't you, Jim? Over this girl, I mean. Mm, perhaps slightly. How much? To you, $15,000. $15,000. Sold. Jim, you certainly are a gallant. It's been a long, long time now since we sent the first jewelry to Lillian Russell for you. And still you say you don't know her. Well, I don't. I expect to meet her someday, of course. At least that's something to look forward to, isn't it? Well, send it. Jim, I, uh, I don't like to discourage you or my business, but uh, I hear she's going to be married soon. Oh, yes? To whom? Well, she's been seen a lot lately with Jesse Lewis. Well, she couldn't get a nicer fellow. <laughs> Jesse is a great friend of mine. And by the way, send her to the Casino Theater. She's opening tonight in the Grand Duchess. Oh, uh, without a card, as usual? Without a card, but in the usual basket of roses, huh? <laughs> Intermission, 15 minutes. 15 minute intermission. Beautiful. Intermission, 15 minutes. 15 minute intermission. Oh, hello, Jim. I was looking for you. Oh, hello, Jesse. Why, I beg your pardon. Oh, uh, Miss McCauley, uh, allow me to present the famous uh, Mr. Jesse Lewison. Famous for what, Jim? Oh, famous uh, for being a friend of Miss Russell, for one thing. And that reminds me, would you like to see something very interesting? Yes, I'd love to. He would, especially if it's Lillian Russell. Oh, oh well, it is. is. She's going to sing over the long-distance telephone for President Cleveland during the intermission. You mean she's going to sing here and the president's going to listen in Washington? That's exactly what I mean. They're connecting the wires backstage right now, and the telephone company claim they can actually do it. No. Yes. Well, lead on, Jesse. This is one time I'll have the advantage on our president. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to come, Miss McCauley? Oh, I'd love to. I, I hope Miss Russell doesn't recognize this gown. It's a copy of one I saw her wear one night at Rector's. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. No, no, I'm not impatient. But President Cleveland is expecting the call at exactly 10 o'clock. Besides, this is the intermission of the show, you know. We can't hold the curtain here forever. Oh, I'd feel so much easier if only Miss Russell was standing by. Would you like to have me sing to the president? No, thank you, Mr. Solomon. If you don't mind. I don't mind. I love to sing. Oh, Miss Russell, stand right here, please. I really believe we're going to make it. Oh, I hope we don't. What? Somehow the idea of singing for the president scares me to death. Don't let it bother you, darling. He won't hear you. This is all a waste of time. Don't you believe him, Lillian. And don't let him frighten you. I have great faith in the telephone. And I have even greater faith in you, my dear. Oh, I don't mind an audience, Jesse, because I usually pick out a friendly face to sing to. 
But how can you sing to someone you can't see? Oh, that's simple, Lillian. You have quite an audience here, and I'll pick out a friendly face for you. Jim, stand over there so Lillian can sing to you. Lillian, this is Jim Brady, the famous Jim Brady. Very happy to meet you, Mr. Brady. <laughs> I've been looking forward to meeting you, Miss Russell. Uh, oh, uh, may I present Miss Edna McCauley? Edna, this is Miss Russell. How do you do? How do you Hello, do? Washington. Yes, we're ready. Is the president ready? This is the president. It is? Miss Russell, the president is listening. <laughs> After the ball is over, after the break of morn, after the dancers leaving, after the stars are gone, many a heart is aching. If you could read. Russell, the president. Yes, Mr. President. Miss Russell, accept our compliments. This has been a great privilege. And we deeply appreciate the honor of having been the first to hear your voice over the long distance telephone. We Americans are very proud of you, Miss Russell. And I sincerely hope that life will always treat you kindly. Thank you, Mr. President. You're so funny. <laughs> I was just thinking of President Cleveland at the other end of that telephone, listening to Lillian Russell and all the time she was singing to me. <laughs> oh, you were very sweet, Mr. Brady, and very encouraging. Thank you. I don't think you could have done it without him, darling. Well, it was just his idea, and I appreciated it. I was thrilled, greatly thrilled, Miss Russell. And Jesse, just to show my appreciation, I'm going to let you dance with Edna. Edna, go on, dance with Mr. Lewis. And go on. I'd like to. May I, Mr. Pauly? Yes, of course, only I wish you'd thought of it yourself. I did, but I was afraid of Jim. <laughs> Imagine anybody being afraid of me. <laughs> if I were a lobster, I'd be afraid of you. <laughs> well, that's good, Mr. Solomon, very good. And you were excellent, too, at the piano today. You play beautifully. You flatter me. No, no, not at all. I've admired you for a long time. I'm familiar with many of your compositions. Well, thank you. It's nice of you to say so. Especially that one you wrote for Miss Russell. What was it called? Um, the Silver Line? Ah, yes, The Silver Line. Oh, that was beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And then, of course, tonight, the Grand Duchess. I, I didn't write The Grand Duchess. Oh, I know, I know. I was just about to say that I didn't like it so much. Oh. <laughs> but you should write all your songs for Miss Russell. Well, I hope someday to write one that's worthy of her. I'm sure you will. Uh, would you do something for me? 
Gladly, if I can. Uh, would you ask the orchestra to play one of your compositions and then you play along with them? Well, I'll ask them to play one, but uh, I, I don't have to play with them. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. It wouldn't sound the same unless you were at the piano. Go ahead, as a favor to me, please. Well, a musician seldom misses an opportunity of showing off. You know our weakness, Mr. Brady. Here. Excuse me, Lily. Yeah. Well, we seem to be alone, don't we? Or aren't you surprised? Do you mind? No. No, as a matter of fact, I rather enjoyed watching you work it out. Is that the way you plan your steel railroad cars and all that sort of thing? What do you know about railroad cars? I don't know anything about them. But I do know all about Diamond Jim Brady. Oh, do you? You really eat as much as people say you do? Well, how much do they say I eat? I once had someone tell me he saw, he saw you eat six dozen oysters on the half shell, three tureens of mock turtle soup, five steaks. It's a libel, it's a libel. I never ate more than three dozen oysters and four steaks at one time in my life. Oh, I see. <laughs> do you enjoy eating? Oh, yes, yes, I love good food. Ah, so do I. Uh, most people, like uh, dumb animals, uh, eat to live. I live to eat. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite among foods? Corn on the cob. No, yes. what's my favorite, too? How many can you eat? When I'm really hungry, two or three, maybe. Two or three. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll spot you three, and I better beat you by ten. All right, we'll try it sometime. <laughs> adored one, my wonderful adored one. So lovely, so charming and divine. Just like a melody, you seem to haunt me, to taunt me, won't let me free. Adored one, you smile and you enchant me. Grant me the right to call you mine. My heart will sing again, my darling, when you do. Adored one, I'm so in love. So beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> what are you laughing at now? <laughs> at myself. Here I've been waiting for years for this moment to be alone with you, and all I could talk about was corn on the cob. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jim. Hi, Jesse. What are you doing prowling about in this rain? Who, me? <laughs> oh, I, I love to prowl around in the rain. Because ever since I was a little boy that high, I love to prowl around in the rain. I used to get some of my best ideas prowling around in the rain. 
Did you get a good one tonight? Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I did. That's why I'm waiting here for Lillian. Do you mind? Well, I, I haven't exactly the right to mind, Jim. Yet. But I'm going to be honest with you. I love Lillian. Well, I'm, I'm glad you told me that, Jesse, because I wouldn't want to do anything to spoil our friendship. I know that, Jim. So I'm going to be just as honest with you. I love Lillian, too. All right. We let the best man win. <laughs> and let the loser be the best man at the wedding, huh? <laughs> Next news week, sir. <laughs> so, the sun we just found out the folks got married today. <laughs> Jim, it's still raining. Got another idea? <laughs> well, boy, this spoils my plans. Lillian Russell is married. <laughs> Were you thinking of marrying her, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a kind of a toss-up with me between Lillian and that new French girl, Anna Hell. Now she ups and marries a poor composer. That chump. Well, she could have had her pick of any millionaire in New York. Maybe she loves the composer. Yeah, sure. Maybe he likes the idea of writing all her shows and that dough she makes every week. To say nothing of the jewelry she takes in from those rich guys she doesn't marry. <laughs> I didn't like that remark, Jack. No? No. I happen to know Lillian Russell. I'll thank you not to speak of her like that again. Well, she does get an awful lot of gifts, doesn't she, Alex? A lot. She gets more than any other woman on the stage. I guess she does, maybe, but I can understand that. People love her, people that don't even know her, but get to feel like they do from just watching her. If I had the money to buy things for her worthwhile, I'd be sending her something every day. All right, Alex, if that's how it is with you, I, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Hey, Alex. Alex, Mr. Sloan wants to see you. Thank you, Jimmy. Alex, sit down. Doing great work on the telegraph, Alex. Thank you, sir. Headed for my job. I don't want your job, Mr. Sloan. <laughs> I don't figure on you getting it for a while yet. But if you keep on the rate you're going, you're the fellow who's going to be sitting here when I quit. Thank you, sir. Alex, how well do you know Lillian Russell? Oh, I wasn't eavesdropping, but I couldn't help but hear part of your conversation with Jack a few moments ago. Well, she wouldn't even remember me, Mr. Sloan. Why not? Well, I only met her once or twice, and that was long ago. Of course, I've seen every show she's been in since then. Did you see this last one of hers, the Grand Duchess? Yes, sir. That's why I took those three days off last month. You went all the way to New York to see a performance of her show? Well, not exactly, sir. Three performances. Three? Friday night, Saturday matinee, and Saturday night. It's a wonderful show, Mr. Sloan. She must be. Alex? There's a great yarn in this girl, and you're the one to get it. I want the story of her life. I want to cover the family angle of her career. I want to show that while her mother was struggling to secure equal political rights with men, that this girl, by her charm and femininity, was bringing men to her feet. I want to scoop those smart New York papers. I want the Pittsburgh Telegraph to tell them the exclusive story of Lillian Russell. That's your next assignment, Alex. I have to go to New York, sir. All right. Get the story. What's the matter? Don't you want to go? Yes, sir, of course. It's just... I wish you'd thought of all this before she got married. Does Miss Russell live here? No, sir. She has lived here for a long time now. Her mother does, though, if you all want to see her. Yes, I would like to thank you. Mrs. Leonard, this gentleman come to see Miss Russell, ma'am. Are you Miss Russell's mother? Yes, I am. I'm Alexander Moore of the Pittsburgh Telegraph. They sent me up to do a story about your daughter, but the show's closed and I couldn't get any information at the theater. And I remembered she used to live here and I... I hate to annoy you, Mrs. Leonard, but perhaps you could help me. 
I haven't seen much of my daughter lately, Mr. Moore. Penalty of success, I suppose. I'm sorry, young man. Young man? Come here, young man. Were you looking for me? No, not exactly, but I am glad to see you again. Again? Do I know you? Well, we never were properly introduced, but we have met before. Don't tell me I flirted with you. You sort of smiled at me a little. I guess maybe you didn't mean to flirt, really. Did I wink at you? No, I don't remember your winking any. Then I wasn't really flirting. Come closer, young man. Let me see your face. My eyes aren't what they used to be. Nothing's like it used to be. My legs are crippled with rheumatism. My heart flutters like a jumping jack most of the time. I've lost every tooth in my head. Plates. Upper and lower. My left ear is stone deaf. And if I didn't feel so good, I'd think uh, old age was coming on me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Noah. All right. Come closer, Emma. Closer, closer. Let me see your face. Are you afraid of me? Why, you're the young man who saved our lives. That's right. A long time ago. Yes, I remember it very well. Why didn't you come back to see Helen? Well, I dropped around, but I... I just never had the nerve to come in. A hero without nerve? Nonsense. When I was young, and a man saved a girl's life, it generally meant something. But I remember taking all kinds of chances, just so some hero could rescue me. Once I tried to swim across the Mississippi. I did, really. I knew I couldn't make it. But I saw the riverboat coming, and I was hoping that when I called out for help, the right man would leap overboard and swim me to shore. And didn't he? No. They fished me up with a net. <sighs> What's your name? Alexander Moore. Helen fell in love with you, Mr. Moore. No, you're just saying that to be nice. I know love when I see it, young man. When she opened her pastors, she was thinking of you. I know because she talked about you all the time. And when she heard you'd been in the theater and hadn't come back to see her, she was hurt, deeply hurt. I know, because she never mentioned your name again. How could you let a girl like Helen slip through your hands? You must be a very stupid young man. I've been told that before. Where is she now? Oh, <laughs> you're too late now. She's married. Yes, I know, but I'm supposed to do a story about her for my paper. I would like to find her. She's in London. We got a cable from her this morning. She's already met the Prince of Wales. And she's going to be in a Gilbert and Sullivan opera at the Savoy Theatre. But don't say I told you. I won't. Thanks a lot. May I come to see you again? Yes, I want you to. But if you want to get a story about Helen, why don't you follow her? Seems to me that's what I would do if I were a newspaper man. Perhaps I will someday, if my paper lets me. Well, if you do, give her this message for me. I don't think I'll give that to anyone. I think I'll just keep that myself. Goodbye. I'll be looking forward to seeing you again. Yes, I want you to. But don't wait so long this time. You might be too long. Are you ready for bed, Grandma? Yes, Cynthia, I'm ready. Oh, Cynthia, I want you to meet Mr. I've already met Mr. Moore. Good night, Mr. Moore. Good night, Mrs. Leonard. Goodbye, young man. Goodbye, Grandma. Cynthia, did you hear that? I finally heard a boy call me Grandma. Sullivan, that's one of your best melodies. And Mr. Gilbert, the lyric is sparkling. Oh. <laughs> William, don't you think you have too many words in this chorus? Uh, doesn't it uh, clutter up the melody a bit? My dear Arthur, it's my opinion that the words save your chorus. 
If you don't mind my saying so, the melody is rather ordinary. In my opinion, my dear William, the words are rather trite and stupid. Well, if they seem so to you, my good fellow, it's because you lack inspiration. I could recite them more effectively than you put them to music. In that case, my dear Gilbert, why do you need music? I don't, Mr. Sullivan. Good night, Mr. Gilbert. Good night, Sullivan. <laughs> See you in the morning. I feel our collaboration would be much more pleasant, Mr. Gilbert, without personal contact. Send me your words, and I shall do my best to jingle a little life into them. I shall be satisfied if you do not utterly destroy them. Words, Mr. Solomon, are precious things, and they are not to be tampered with. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. You're welcome, Mr. Solomon. Goodbye, Mr. Gilbert. Goodbye, Mr. Solomon. Where's Miss Russell? She's nearly an hour late for rehearsal. Miss Russell isn't coming tonight, but her husband is here. But I didn't call her husband. I called Miss Russell. Alone. Perhaps that is why her husband is here, William. Tell him to come in. Yes, sir. Mr. Solomon! Mr. Solomon! Who on earth does she think she is? You're in good voice tonight, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, thank you. Never mind my voice. Where's your wife? Why isn't she here? Which question do you want me to answer first? Both, if you don't mind. My wife is at home, which is why she isn't here. As a matter of fact, I persuaded her not to come. Oh, really? I figured if there was anything special you wanted her to know, you could explain it to me, and I'll gladly explain it to her. I see. Perhaps she could even sing her duet with Mr. Martin here for me. I can if you want me to. I love to sing. Well, I don't want you to sing her duet either. And I don't mind telling you, sir, I have to resent your constant interference. And I resent your summoning my wife to night rehearsals after she spent the entire day with your company. Lillian Russell may not mean anything to England, but in America, she's recognized as a great star, and I expect you to treat her accordingly. If you doubt her ability to play the role, then get someone else. You dare to speak to me in that tone, sir? I do. My wife is very anxious for a London success, but if she doesn't get it from you, she'll get it somewhere else. I, too, write for the theater, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, so that's it. That's why you barge in here to provoke a quarrel with me. It isn't your wife's career you're concerned about. It's your own. Very well, sir. You can tell Mrs. Solomon from me that her services are no longer required. Thank you, sir. You're sure you don't want me to sing that duet with Mr. Martin? Get out. I don't ever want to see you again. Good night, sir. And good luck. Oh, thank you. Get out, sir. Feeling well, Mum? Oh, no, it, it's just the rehearsal, Maria. I'm not used to missing any of them. Oh, but you've been in the theatre all day, Mum. I don't wonder at Mr. Solomon wanting you to take a rest. No. Oh, I never get tired of the theatre, Maria. Oh, I'll get it. It's probably Mr. Solomon. Well, darling, I was a complete success. I not only got you out of the rehearsal, but I got you out of the show as well. Ah, oh, stop fooling, Teddy. What happened? I told you, you're fired. Because of the rehearsal? Well, yes, that started the argument. Oh, Teddy, don't tell me you lost your temper again. Well, all right. Crawl to your London Triumph if you want to. Go get on your knees to Mr. Gilbert. He'll forgive you, I'm sure. Tell him from now on you'll be a very good little girl. Or vice versa, I don't care which. Well, if you don't care which, I'll see Mr. Gilbert tomorrow and ask him to take me back. And you won't have to ask him twice, I can assure you. I can even tell you exactly what he'll say. My dear Miss Russell, I'm glad to have you back, but I don't like that, that meddlesome husband of yours. He's very stupid, crazy, and, and selfish. Doesn't want anybody to do anything for you but himself. That's exactly what he'll say to you. And unfortunately, it's the truth. Every word of it. But I, I can't help myself, Lillian. That's the way I feel about you. I want to write you the greatest operator of your career. And I can, if you'll only have faith in me. I'll start tonight, right this very minute. Teddy. Sit down by me. Turn the light out. Teddy, I've been unfair to you. You've never been unfair to anyone, except yourself. Yes, I have. I've kept something from you, and I should have told you. If it's anything that might come between us, Lillian, don't tell me now. I'd never give you up. You know that, don't you? Even if you should tell me you'd, 
you didn't love me anymore, I wouldn't let you go. I couldn't. I couldn't live without you. There is someone else, Teddy. A baby. A baby? You mean... You mean I'm gonna have a baby? No. I'm gonna have a baby, dear. So you see, it's just as well I'm out of the show. What's the matter? Aren't you happy about it? I've never been happier in my life, but never more thoroughly convinced of my selfishness. But why? Why? I've risked your entire career, just as if it belongs to me, and it doesn't. Even you have no right to jeopardize it, Lillian. I'll be very proud of our child, if anything should happen to you because of it, I'd hate myself forever. But what could happen, Ted? Well, you, you might die. Or it might change in so many ways that you'll never really be Lillian Russell again. Oh, Teddy, you're so horribly morbid. If I should die, I'd consider it a glorious ending to my career. If I live and my career should die, I'd... I'd consider it a lovely beginning of a new life. So now, darling, take me in your arms. Hold me tight. Don't let me go. Please don't let me go. Till the fire burns out. Anything you'd like me to do? No, thank you, Marie. Good night. Good night. Oh, Marie. Yes, sir. Did you give Mr. Solomon his eggnog? Yes, sir. Did he drink it all? All of it, ma'am. Good. I told him it was an English custom never to return a glass half empty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, he doesn't look at all well, ma'am. Oh, he's awfully tired. He's worked so hard. He says it's going to be the greatest role of your career, ma'am. Oh, I hope it is for his sake. It hasn't been a very easy year for any of us, has it, Marie? Been the happiest year of my life, ma'am. Ah, oh, you're sweet, Marie. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Oh, Marie. Uh, yes, ma'am. It's past eight, isn't it? How about our visitor? Visitor, ma'am? Yes. Oh! Oh, you mean the American newspaper, ma'am, ma'am? Oh, dear, I completely forgot, ma'am. Marie, how could you forget, especially when you know he's bringing us money? Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry, ma'am. Well, you let him in, won't you? And. What did you say his name was? Oh, I have it here, ma'am. Alexander Moore. Alexander Moore. Isn't it strange? I seem to remember that name so well. Alexander Moore. Of course I remember it. Good night, Marie. Good night, ma'am. Blue lovebird, your songs are tender thing. That wasn't meant to sing alone. Blue love bird, still singing for your mate, but it's your fate to wait alone. Once there were two of you singing to the dawn. What can a lover do when his love has gone? Blue lover, your song becomes.
comes a sigh It seems that lovebirds die Alone Teddy, that was beautiful. Thank you, darling. Listen how the different instruments fit into the orchestration. First, the violins. Then the cellos. Then the flutes. They sound like birds, don't they? Mm-hmm. Who is that interrupting? Oh, darling, please. Come in. It's Mr. Moore, ma'am. Oh, thank you, Marie. I'll be out in a moment. Who is Mr. Moore? Darling, remember right after the baby was born, I told you I was going to cable that Pittsburgh newspaper and find out if they still wanted my life story? Yes. Do you remember what you said? No. Well, I do. You said it was too late and they wouldn't be interested. But you were wrong, Teddy. Mr. Moore's from the Pittsburgh Telegraph. Now they're really going to do your story? Mm -hmm. That's what he's here for. And darling, you know what I'm going to do with that money? What, dear? We're going to go away. And you're going to take a long rest. No, darling. I'm not going away with you until I've finished this score. Oh, but you're so awfully tired. I am tired, dear. But it's fun getting tired from work you love. When I'm finished and you tell me I've kept my promise and written your greatest role, then you can take me away for as long as you wish. But you have so much more to do. Well, I... Unless you promise you'll go away with me, I'll never tell you I like your operetta. And I may not sing it, even when it's finished. Well, I guess that settles it. <laughs> we go away. That is, if you get enough money for your life. What do you think my life is worth? More than all the newspapers in the world could pay, darling. Oh, you sweet. <laughs> so are you, darling. Now run along, sell yourself to the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lillian, please tell Marie not to bring me any more eggnogs. Right when I'm in the middle of a great idea, she comes in and pushes an eggnog right under my nose. Please, darling, no more. Hmm? All right, darling, no more. Not tonight. This is the agreement, Miss Russell. I think you'll find it very simple. It's in letter form. It really gives our paper the exclusive rights to publish your story. You'll have to sign where it says accepted. And this is your check. Why did you break our pact, Mr. Moore? I didn't think you even remembered me, Miss Russell. But that doesn't answer my question, Mr. Moore. I don't think I can answer it without quibbling a little. You see, I made my pact with a girl named Helen Leonard. And when I found out she was Lillian Russell, I... I got scared, I guess. You look very well, Miss Russell. Oh, thank you. You haven't changed very much. And I haven't seen you since Mother was defeated in the election. Poor Mother. She's the one your paper should really be interested in. Why don't you write a story of her life? I'm sure it would be greater than mine. I don't think my paper exactly agrees with you, Miss Russell. You see, my paper sort of considers you're one of the finest women that ever lived. Not only because of your success, but on account of the way you've carried it. I guess maybe you don't realize it, but everybody in America loves you. Everybody? They just can't help themselves, I guess. You sort of got a way of making people love you. I mean, that's... That's how my paper feels about you. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Mr. Moore. But before your paper discovers how completely different things have been for me here in London, I think I'd better sign this letter. Well, you needn't bother with it tonight if you'd rather your attorney or business manager, someone looks it over first. Oh, no, no. I'm my own business manager, Mr. Moore. And I'm sure we won't need an attorney. Do you remember Grandma? Oh, yes. In fact, I saw her in New York just before she... I loved her so very much, Mr. Moore. I'll always remember her. Or 
all my life. Do I sign here? Right here, Miss Russell. I can understand how you feel about her because I know how she felt about you. Did you talk with Grandma? Oh, yes, indeed. We had quite a long chat. Did you... Did you tell her you were going to write about me? Yes, I told her that's why I was looking for you. What did she say? Well, she... Um, she gave me some sort of a message for you. What was it? Um, I've been trying to think of it. It's, it's just been so long ago, I, I really can't recall it. It's beautiful music. Yes, it is lovely, isn't it? Mr. Solomon is writing that for me. You're very happy, aren't you? Yes, very. And you've really achieved your ambition, haven't you? A successful career and the happy romance. Well, I guess I have, but... my career has sort of been lost in a London fog lately. I didn't do so well in New York. I went back home. Pittsburgh? Yes, I've been there ever since. Married? No. No prospects? No. No girls? No. Well, yes, there is a girl I sort of grew up with. What's her name? Lucille. Lucille. Oh, I like that name. Why don't you marry her? I guess I just never thought of asking her. Maybe she wouldn't have me even if I did. I'd like to start our work tomorrow if we could, Miss Russell. Oh, well, we can begin right now if you'd like to, no, Mr. Oh, I've Moore. taken up enough of your time tonight, but if we could devote the afternoon to it tomorrow, say from about one o'clock on, mm -hmm. I can only be abroad in four weeks, and I have to visit Paris, Vienna, and Budapest before sailing back. Business? Yes. And I was flattering myself that you came all the way to London just to interview me. Well, you're the most important assignment, Miss Russell. That is, that's how my paper feels about you. Well, good night, Miss Russell. Good night. Oh, Mr. Moore, wouldn't you like to meet Teddy before you leave? Won't he be annoyed? Oh, no. I'm afraid he would be annoyed if I let you go without him meeting you. Do you mind? No, I'd like to. Thank you. Teddy? Teddy? Poor darling. He's sound asleep. But I won't disturb him. He's so awfully tired. You'll meet him tomorrow. We'll all have tea together. And you will keep this pact, won't you? You can depend on it. Good night. Good night. And thank you. Thank you very much. You'll never know what this means to both Teddy and me. Good night. Good night. Pay to the order of Lillian Russell. $2,500. Oh, you little rascal. I thought I had you set for the night. Oh, no, baby. No. Oh, aren't you a bad little girl? No, you're a good little girl. And your mommy's going to sing you to sleep all over again. No, no. 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 Lover, your song becomes a sigh. It seems that lovebirds die. Russell wanted to write you a note, Mr. Moore, but she simply couldn't. Oh, it's been a terrible shock to her. And she felt that you'd understand why she couldn't possibly go on with her story. Yes, I do understand. I'm sorry. 
When did it happen? Before you left last night. It was as hard, the doctor says. And Miss Russell, how is she? Oh, like someone in a daze, Mr. Moore. I can't get her to see anyone. I was praying that she'd see you, figuring that the work on her life story might take her mind off things, but she wouldn't. She said she didn't like stories with sad endings. Good day, sir. Uh, Mr. Moore, we have your Paris transportation for next Monday. Shall I send it to your room, sir? No, thank you. I'm leaving today, if you can manage it. Well, very good, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, ma'am. Aren't they gorgeous? They're beautiful, Marie. Would you read the card for me? Dear Miss Russell, I'm so sorry, Alexander Moore. That's nice, isn't it? Mr. Moore phoned to say goodbye, ma'am. He's leaving for Paris today, but he said that if you wanted to reach him before he sailed for America, you could... America? Mm, it seems so long since I've been home. Oh, ma'am, you haven't read your telegrams. Shall I read them for you? If you wish, Marie. Dear Lillian, my deepest sympathy. Is there anything I can do for you? Jim Brady. Sweet old Jim. Always wanting to do something for someone. Lillian, dear. I am terribly grieved by your sorrow. Can I help you in any way? Jesse Lewis, son. Jesse. He's so real, too. They're both very dear friends, Marie. Dear Miss Russell, may I extend you my deepest sympathy, and though the time be inappropriate, uh, may I offer you the leading role in my operetta, which is to begin rehearsal shortly, respectfully and hopefully yours, William Gilbert. Oh, ma'am, is that Gilbert of Gilbert and Sullivan? Yes, Marie. But aren't you excited about it, ma'am? No. I'm afraid I couldn't be excited over anything right now. Oh, but ma'am, aren't you going to accept the offer? No, Marie. I'm going to America. Without a London success, no. Oh, he would want you to do it. I've heard him say it time and time again. Lily and I've heard him say, you'll bring London to your feet before we're through. That's why he worked so hard, man. He wanted you to have a London success. Oh, <laughs> even the baby thinks so too, man. <laughs>
comes a sigh It seems that lovebirds die very kind of you to let me do Teddy song. It's a brilliant song, my dear. But nobody could have put the heart into it that you did. Thank you. Good night. Good night, my dear. Marie, please leave and take care of my carriage. Dorothy, the park is too crowded. Uncle Jesse, will you take me for a ride? The skipper says no, Dorothy. Uncle Jim, will you take me? My dear young lady, if you were half the size you are and I was twice the man I am, I couldn't pedal that thing another 10 feet. Now, don't pout, darling. It's time for you and Marie to go anyway. But I don't want to go home without you, Mother. Jim, you're exhausted. Why don't you ride back in the carriage with Dorothy? Would you like Uncle Jim to go back with you, Dorothy? Dorothy's going to be a good little girl and go home with Marie. Now say goodbye to Uncle Jesse and Uncle Jim and I'll run you a race to the carriage. Like we did yesterday for a nickel? Yes, dear. But, Mother, I don't want to get in the carriage. I want to go home with a bicycle. Oh, of course you do. But, Jesse, you're not all tired out. Why don't you and Marie ride Dorothy home on the bicycle and I'll go in the carriage with Uli? Would you like that, my dear? Oh, yes. Will you, Uncle Jesse? Marie can ride, can't you, Marie? Yes, and you can walk, too. Come on. But, Mother, I don't want to go home without you. I don't like to do without you, Mother. You know why? Why? Because I get awful lonesome for you, Mother. Then I can't eat. Then I get sick, Mother. Don't I, Marie? <laughs> You know why I get sick when I can't eat when I get off the lonesome for you, Mother? Why, dear? Because I love you so much. And when you go to rehearsals, I don't see you in the daytime. And when the show opens, I won't see you at night. All right, darling. I'll go home and have dinner with you and study my lines for tomorrow. You won't mind, will you? No, no, no of course not. Mind. All right, young lady. One. Fire nickel, Mother. Yes. Two. Three, go! What are you laughing at? <laughs> you and me? <laughs> Every time I start out with Lillian, I end up with you. <laughs> I don't think it's so funny, Jim, and you don't either. I know you. You laugh when you're hurt. You still love Lillian, don't you? Don't you? No. I'm being honest with you, Jim. I am in love with Edna. Edna? My Edna? No. My Edna. 
Oh, I know. You and she have been friends for a good many years. Friends? We were practically engaged when I introduced you to him. This is the real thing, Jim. We're going to be married. Do you mind? Oh, I... I haven't the right to mind. Have you told Lillian about this? You haven't given me a chance to be alone with her. Besides, she doesn't really love me, Jim. Never did. She's the best friend a man ever had, but uh, she doesn't love me. And she doesn't love you. What makes you so sure of that? I'm not sure. In fact, I hope I'm wrong. But I've known Lillian for a long, long time. And I just don't think that either of us is her type of man. And that's what sort of spoils things for me. Why? Because I know how lonely you're going to be without Edna when you lose Lillian again. <laughs> you wouldn't want to bet a lot of money against my chances, would you? Come on, come on. No, but uh, you can't buy her, Jim. I tried that. Have you ever offered to lay everything that you have in the world at her feet? Well, not exactly. Well, I'm going to. And it's going to be millions, Jesse. Millions. Hello, Jim. Oh, good evening. Good evening. How do you do, Mr. Hey, Rennie? Jim, I never thought you'd desert your horses. Well, I didn't really buy it for myself. Take it around the stage door and wait there, will you? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Hello, Jim. How are you? Curtain in two minutes. Curtain in two minutes. Curtain in two minutes. <laughs> when they get the sewing up in front. <laughs> Little pin. Well, Edna, here's wishing you every happiness in the world. And may you and Jesse never know a moment of sorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And as for you, I can't wish you anything better than Edna. So here's to the bride. And now, dear, let's drink to Jim. To you, Jim. To you and Lillian. Oh, I, I'm going to ask her tonight. Well, here's hoping she says yes. She will. And Jim, I think you should be very grateful to me for taking Jesse out of your way. Oh, but I am. And by the same token, I'm very grateful to Jesse. <laughs> and so here's to the fair Lillian. Here's to the fair Lillian. To Lillian. Curtain, everybody. Curtain, everybody! Curtain, everybody! Curtain, everybody! Curtain, everybody! Curtain, everybody! Have you any bicarbonate of soda? Certainly, Mr. Pastor. May I mix it for you? If you please. <laughs> Not a very inviting drink, eh? As to the penalty of uh, too much food and too many years. I seem to recognize you, don't I know you? Yes, you do, Mr. Pastor. Oh, of course I do, the runaway. You was the hero. <laughs> By Jim and Nettie, the stupid young man. Uh, stupid <laughs> young man fully describes me, Mr. Pastor. You were so anxious to tell me that Lillian Russell was really Helen Leonard. <laughs> well, I was sort of crazy about Helen Leonard. And not Lillian Russell? Did you ever try to reach to the sky and touch a star? Yes, many times. In fact, I have given Broadway many stars. Excuse me, Mr. Moore. And Broadway has given me many thrills. You live in New York, Mr. Moore? No, Pittsburgh. Upon a visit. Just to see the show, I'm leaving at midnight. Oh, still following your star. <laughs> Though you're afraid to reach for it. Well, good night, Mr. Moore. It's been a pleasure seeing you. It's been a very pleasant surprise for me, Mr. Pastor. Well, surprised to see me at one of Webern Fields opening? That's the wrong theater. Yes, but they're all my people. Almost all of them started in my theater. Why, it seemed only yesterday those two boys were working for me for $75 a week. And now I don't think there's money enough in the world to pay them for the pleasure they've given other people. Joe Weber and Lou Fields. Joe. Joe, give me a quick, quick, quick. What, what, what? Listen to that reception, Lily Russell is giving. Uh -huh. You know, I think this is the best show I've ever done. You've ever done? Yeah. Who are you now? The both of us? 
I, I hired Lily Russell. You hired her? Yeah, I hired her. Why, when I told you her salary, you paid it. Yes, and when I came to, I told you to hire her. You told me to offer her 50% less than what she wanted. Well, you did, didn't you? Sure. And for that, she added $500 a week to her original salary. Sure, that's because she was smart. No, that's because you were dumb. Hey, hey, stop that. Get out the cards. What, what, Come on. what, what? You know, we go on in a few minutes now, Joe, and already I'm, I'm really getting nervous. Yeah? I tell you what. What? We play one trick game of casino for ten dollars a point. Well, I don't know how to play casino. You never played it? Never. Well, whatever I don't know, I'll teach you. Yeah? Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, I tell you, but, to make the game interesting, yeah. we'll make a side bet that I beat you. Well, you ought to beat me. Why? Well, you know the game and I don't. Oh, gracious, I haven't played casino in years. I tell you what I do. What you do? You give me arts, then I bet you. Give you what? Arts, arts. What do you mean, give you arts, arts? What is that arts? Arts. You should put up more money to my Lester this morning. No, I won't do that. No? I'll tell you what I will do. What? I'll put up five dollars against your ten. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Well, then put it up, all right. Put all right. Here. Here's it. Put the money right here. There. Hamlet! Don't disturb us tonight, because whenever I play cards with this sneak and poop, I forget everything else but murder. <laughs> and that's good for the act later. Yeah. Now, how do you like what that Dave Warfield you said to me backstage? I don't like it. What did he say? <laughs> he wants more money? He, he wants to be a dramatic actor. Uh -huh. He said he's tired of low comedy and, and wants to play something with a lot of heart. Yeah, well, for that I don't blame him. That's what I would like to do. You? Yeah. You haven't got a heart to play with. Uh -huh. But come on, come on, start the game. What do you mean, come on, I don't know the game. Why, it's so simple. Look. Uh -huh. On the table is a five, uh -huh. a jack, yeah. deuce of spades, and ten of diamonds. Yeah. Four cards. Yeah. You've got four cards in your hand to take them with. Uh -huh. Now, the deuce of spades is little casino, yeah. and the ten of diamonds, that's big casino. Oh, father and son. Yeah. Uh, don't come to the father and son. What do you mean? Just stop that. Well, don't joke with me then. Yeah. If you take the little casino, uh -huh. that counts a point. Yeah, yeah. If you take the big casino, uh -huh. that's two points. Two points. That's yeah. a great card. Uh -huh. That's the best card in the whole game. Nice looking. Yeah, have you got a ten in your hand? Yeah, yeah, I got a ten. You have? Yeah. Really? Yeah, sure. Loan it to me. Loan it to you? Yeah. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's what's the matter? Well, I didn't loan you the ten to take in the casino. No, you, you give me back my ten. Well, I only did it as a favor to you, that's all. Never mind, I don't want your favor. Well, all right. Uh, Indian your favor. All right, all right. Your favor's then. cost me enough. Yeah. Yeah, well, I take in the ten because that counts two points for me. No, for me. Uh, but when you take it, that counts for me. Yeah? And when I take it, that's for you. Oh, I see. Now, I've got nothing, so I'll throw down a queen. Well, what does that count? Nothing, unless you've got a queen. Yeah, i got a queen. Well, take it. Yeah, all right, I'll Good. take that it. That counts four points for me. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't take it. Well, no, you, no. you've got to take it if you've got a queen. Well, i got a deuce in my hand. I'd rather take the little casino because that only counts one point for you. Well, don't you understand? When you're playing casino, the first rule says ladies first. Uh -huh. Now, if there's a queen on the table yes. and you've got a queen in your hand, you've got to take it. You've got to take and it. besides, i got a seven, uh -huh. so I'm taking the five and little casino. Yeah, good, yeah. Ah, good, good. Then that counts one point for me. No, for me. I took it, didn't I? Yeah, well, when I took the big casino, you said that counted for you too. Ah, but when you took it, you didn't say casino. Yeah, but you didn't tell me I had to say casino. Well, you, you don't have to say it, but every time you do say it, that's a point. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh-huh. Casino, casino, casino. What do you mean, casino, casino? What are you taking, you? You're trying to cheat before you even know the game. No, no, I'm taking the jacket clothes with the jacket diamonds when I said casino three times. So that's three points for me. <laughs> you, you said so yourself. I told you when you said casino once, that counted to you. But when you say it three times, that, that's just like in baseball. You're out. And besides, I get three points. So you owe me altogether ten points or a hundred dollars. I owe you a hundred dollars? Yes. I wouldn't pay it. What do you mean you wouldn't pay it? I told you I wouldn't pay it. I'll choke the life out of you. You go after the minute of deals. This Russell is just finishing a run call. You run almost any minute. Oh, yes. Good, 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 fine. Come on, Joe, come on, come on. on. You know, I've got a wonderful mood for you tonight. Uh -huh. If you don't give me that hundred dollars, I'll... I'll kill you out there. You see, my dog. You? Yes, you. You bet I will. Yeah, you and who else? What do you mean, who else? Marie, who wrote this? I did, Lillian. 
Jim Brady, what are you doing back here during the performance? Why aren't you out front? Well, I couldn't wait any longer, you see. I got an idea, and whenever I get an idea, I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lily and I just had to do it. You mean this? Yes. I've been trying to say it for a long time. Oh, Jim, you're sweet. But I'm going to scold you tonight. What, again? Yes, and seriously. Now, Jim Brady, just look at all these lovely presents you sent me. A basket of orchids with a diamond necklace and bracelet. American Beauty roses with rubies. Gardenias with emeralds. Violets with pearls. And a jewel-studded bicycle. Jim, have you lost your mind? No. Just my heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Lillian, uh, Edna and Jesse are out front watching the show. Mm -hmm. They're married. Married? Yes. You were always very fond of Jesse, weren't you? Yes. Yes, he was a grand friend, Jim. But I, I suppose you'll miss Edna, won't you? No. I'll not miss anything in this world or anybody. If I had you, I'd give you everything that I have in the world, if you'd say yes. A year from now, if you're tired of me, I'd step out of your life forever. But you'd never have to worry about a thing. Lily and I love you. Oh, Jim. Lillian, why are you crying, hmm? Because I don't love you, Jim. I, I wish I did. <laughs> come on, Lily, come on. <laughs> Stop your crying. I was only joking, on my word. I only said that because, uh, well, you were scolding me about the gifts, and uh, I wanted you to believe that I was serious. <laughs> Come now, stop your crying. <laughs> you know, I, I would make the worst husband in the world. As soon as I realized that you were mine, I'd probably tire of you the same as I tired of everything else I got out of life. <laughs> the exception, of course, corn on the cob. <laughs> I would, really. Jim. Jim. You don't mean that. And I know it. Oh, I've hurt you. Deeply. And I'm sorry. But if I married you, I'd, I'd even hurt you more. Because it would be gratitude, not love. And you wouldn't want that, Jim, would you? What if I said yes? Then I'd marry you, Jim. You mean that? Yes, I do. <laughs> you know, Lillian, <laughs> this is about the shortest honeymoon two people ever had. <laughs> and now it's all over. And it seems to me Miss Lillian Russell is very happy about it. No. No, I'm not happy, Jim. Neither are you. Oh, I know it's funny, but we're very much alike, aren't we? I mean, we've each had everything that life could give us, except what we've really wanted. And, Jim, I've, I've looked for it so hard. When I was a girl and first went to work for Tony Pastor, my mother didn't want me to, because she said every success has its penalty. And somehow, life has a strange way of making you pay for everything it gives you. Now I know what she meant. You know, Lillian, I wish I could give you the happiness you're looking for. And, Jim, I wish I could do the same for you. Now, don't, don't worry about me. The only thing I'm thinking about is what we're going to have to eat after the show. You've got a supper date with me, you know. Yes, Jim. I'll be waiting for you. And, uh, Lillian, I have another little present for you. 
outside the stage door. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yes. very wicked man. I do him when a lad. See, I never met his equal telling lies. And although he takes delight in doing everything that's bad, he thinks he'll go to heaven when he dies. Ah, but when a child, he robbed his dear old grandma in her sleep. He stole two golden teeth out of her jaws. Now he's been a kleptomaniac since he began the creep. But the neighbors think that he's all right because he goes to church on Sunday. And he passes round the contribution box. Ah, but meet him in an office on a Monday. He's as crooked and as cunning as a fox. On Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he's robbing everybody that he can. Oh, but he goes to church on Sunday, so they say that he's an honest man. <laughs> But he goes to church on Sunday. Hmm. Isn't it strange, Marie? I so often think of Alexander Moore, but so seldom see him. He's waiting at the stage door now, if you'd care to see him. Oh, I do. Bring him right in and please hurry, Marie. Yes, sir. It's been a long time, Mr. Moore, and you've missed so many chapters of my story. I've been reading them, Miss Russell. Have they seemed as interesting as you would have written them? Oh, I don't think I was ever worthy of the assignment, Miss Russell. However, if we had gone through with it, I might have gotten in some ideas of my own. <laughs> but I couldn't have improved on it. Your success has been glorious. Thank you. And now tell me about you. What have you been doing? Still on the newspaper? Newspaper work is seldom a career, Miss Russell. It's a lifetime. But I've done very well. I have my own paper now. Really? I told you you would, didn't I? The Pittsburgh Telegraph? No, the leader. I'll have a review of your show on it tomorrow. A good one. I'll send you a copy so that you can finally read an article about yourself in my paper. Oh, I'll enjoy that. And now, tell me about you and... Oh, you know who I mean. You, you told me all about her in London. Lucille? Lucille. I should have remembered. It's one of my favorite names. How is she? I haven't seen her in quite some time. Then... then you didn't marry? Yes, we did. It just couldn't work out. Divorced. Oh, I'm sorry. Love is so elusive at times, isn't it? Yes, it seems so, doesn't it? Oh, the last act, man. We must hurry. Yes, Marie, get my things ready. I'm so sorry you have to go back so soon. Must you? Yes, you see, it's sort of a duty. I've just taken over the paper, and I borrowed quite a lot of money to buy it. I have to work it out somehow. No, oh, you will. Oh, yes, I will, but it'll take a lot of work. I'll be up again sometime, maybe. Soon? Maybe. Well, why don't you wire me and we'll arrange to have dinner together. We will. <laughs> don't you want to? Yes, sure I do. As a matter of fact, I've had dinner with you lots of times. Really? When? You wouldn't remember. You weren't there. Good night, Mr. Russell. It was nice of you to see me. 
Then I'm so glad you came back. So am I. Isn't it a strange coincidence, Mr. Moore? Ever since the first time I came to New York, you seem to have punctuated my life. Whenever anything important or serious happened to me, you've... you've come along. Maybe it wasn't coincidence. Good night. Good night, Mr. Moore. Last act number, we really must hurry. Marie. Yes, sir. Did you hear what he said? He said it wasn't a coincidence. Do you realize what that means, Marie? It means that... that he's been thinking about me all these years. That he's been in love with me almost all of my life. Marie. Yes. Marie, find him for me. Oh, don't worry about this. He's leaving for Pittsburgh tonight, and I don't want him to go, because if he does, it'll be years before I see him. Tell him I don't want him to go. Tell him, tell him I've got to see him. It's important. Marie, tell him anything, but find him. Find him. Hurry, Marie.
I'm so glad you came back. I wanted to make another pact with you. You promised to keep it. I've never really broken it. Helen. If you enjoyed this movie, then hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. Leave a comment if you like. Thanks for listening. Bye.